so I'm getting a little fried here. I'm working on this presentation. I've got a lot done, including stuff to help other people do the calculations I've done for themselves, you know, with their own typical um, usage patterns or what they're interested in. Um, I also uh, broadened out. I, I had kind of gotten this baseline of co-location. Um, Gary, bless his heart, um, was saying maybe we should consider things besides co-location and stuff. And pretty much we need a co-location where we, you know, just pay for bandwidth as a baseline. But then I thought about that, you know, uh, not specifically because Gary said it, but just to, to give credit, yeah. And there was something else too um, that turned out to be good. Um, but anyway, so looking at there's dedicated server. There, there's like co-location where you rent to own the server, so it's a lot like dedicated servers. But instead, you know, you just have to watch out for the people that are all dedicated and shared, and they just they say unlimited, and really they're making you share, and you don't know how much you're gonna get need someone at least that does a dedicated server thing that's like co-location so basically with these people that are legit that I have found a bunch of you get the machine and the bandwidth so for around three hundred dollars a month you get the machine and the bandwidth now you're paying more for the machine if you end up buying the machine but if you're just setting up a year of a server then over that year it's cheaper uh, but then I've come around back to, to probably wanting to buy a machine and find a co-locator that just provides the bandwidth. Um, I, I'm, one reason I'm rethinking this is I'm not really happy with the local and Hilo uh, people so far. And um, there's plenty of co-locators that you can do dedicated this way where you can email them your server. There's plenty of those. And I realized something I could do. One of the problems with doing our video server was RAID, and it's actually still limited to RAID. You know, you have four drives, and so they have, you know, at least four heads or whatever read heads you've got in there. And, but we had this idea of doing a fast, a small, fast drive so that you could make, you know, videos responsive. Um, that are getting a lot of traffic or a recent or whatever, or a little mix of both. And then archiving on just commodity cheap disks. Well, um, so I was looking into this and if what we want to do is just get a solid state drive. A solid state drive is better than RAID. And you know, for an 80 gigabyte uh, drive uh, with my model user being one video a day, 10 megabytes, and it's not a flat rate. It's like if you're doing two videos a day at that rate, then you need two units. And if you want to do a high def, maybe you need 10 units. Um, whereas this one unit is supposed to be this dollar a month marker level. But the solid state drives are, are better than RAID. Um, the access is, yeah, I mean, it's actually obvious. This is what we want to do. So we're going to get an 80 or 120 gigabyte um, solid state drive for all the, you know, a month or two of live videos, a month or two being that, that kind of user I just mentioned, you know, 200 of them on the server. I'm hoping this server can support, you know, one to 300 people depending on their habits and stuff and maybe even more, but that's, I'm aiming that that would you know, that has to be true for it to all make sense. Um, there's, there's so many things that that hinges on. Uh, but anyway, um, so, and I'm being conservative in the way I'm estimating, so I think we're doing fine. But anyway, that reduces some of the money on the server because you can get a much smaller server if you're just going to get two drives instead of four drives and RAID and Stripe and the extra controller and you have to set it up and everything like this. Um, you just get two drives. One is the fast drive, which will be a solid state drive for streaming the videos, basically the, the videos that are commonly needed. And then there's the archive that can you can just keep building. And if people were watching a lot of archive video, a particular video that's in the archive, it just be moved to the faster disk. So, uh, and if you have just uploaded, then probably, you know, you're 
whether people are watching it or not, your video stays on the fastest for, you know, two weeks or four weeks or something. So I consider that good news. Um, anyway, they, 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 there'll be a lot more about this when you, uh, you know, I'm going to share a lot of my research and including fun parts like the bitrate calculator for flash video and various things you can study and learn. And, um, but yeah, I got just a little bit of a tangent, just had to follow looking this stuff up, and now I got distracted from working on the presentation itself and looked at all this co-locators and stuff, but but it looks pretty good, actually. Um, one with this new server thing that saves a few hundred dollars and just it makes it more flexible. And then it's still difficult because um, a lot of the people make it look like the pricing is not right. We, we want to have like a five terabyte per month bandwidth limit with a hundred or at least 50 um, megabits per second, you know, burst speed, simultaneous speed for the simultaneous, simultaneous downloads. And then the other thing for the total number of videos that can be watched. And, um, so yeah, 10 terabytes would be pretty good. Five is probably fine. Um, we could maybe just see how it goes with less than that. Uh, I'm trying to limit the amount of shock we might have of, oh, it's gonna be $2 a month. I mean, that that itself might just be fair, just for me, even if people are like willing to do that. Though there are ways to fundraise and stuff and, and deal with changes in the price. But, but you know, I find you, you gotta focus really hard on making, no, it has to be this way. And then if it's off after that, you know, because if you're like, oh, well, I think it's gonna be this way, but it could be off, then you'll find it's off by a factor of 10 or 20. And I want off by a factor of 50% or something, ideally. And also, ideally, for it to be in the optimistic direction, in other words, conservative estimates, which I have been doing because using myself as typical, I used a bunch of users that were similar to myself, but of the group of 100 people that are interested in this as a hobby, I mean, the numbers are such, you know, are probably better. They're not so stringent as, you know, I produce three gigabytes of videos a year. <laughs> okay, but there's people that do worse, but. And remember, too, that it's just we're going to make a typical unit of use and, you know, we will evolve as systems to accurately, you know, charge you. If you have a lot more viewers or anything else, you might have to figure out a way to compensate for that. Okay, so, yeah, there's that. So, these uh, solid-state drives, interesting, that's what we want instead of RAID, I think. It's just a couple of years old, but they're... You know, I had heard, I mean, I know, I've known about those. These are like flash drives, but basically there's problems with flash drives traditionally, but they started solving and claiming to solve some of those, you know, three-ish years ago. And so, well, the specs are just so good that the main thing is they might wear out really fast, but if they, I mean, I just think that's what we want for our, for the fact that we need to have random access. That's what you want for the video. For the And then, you know, things on the archive will still stream. It'll just, you know, take a couple seconds. If everything was on a slow drive, then it would take longer than that because it'd be seeking all over the place. But with, yeah, I mean, as soon as the third person wants the same video off the hard drive, you can move it to the fast disk and it won't matter how many people. You just, it, it literally won't matter, it's, it's fast, so. Okay, so that's good. All right, cheers.